So hey there, I'm riding with uh, Tezande. This is his video, obviously, and I wanted to ask you uh, a question, Mr. Tezande, while you drive. Make sure you drive safely. I'm, I'm driving safely. Do, do not eyes, look at this. My eyes are on the road. Okay. I am not looking at the camera. Okay. So My eyes are straight ahead. What I wanted to know from you is, who is Tezande? Is Tezande a uh, exaggerated version of your a personality. That's is how he started. He started as kind of like, it's funny how I'm talking about Tay Zonday in the third person. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, my real name is Adam. Uh, I, Tay Zonday started as like the Marvel Capcom superhero version of me. This thing I created that would be separate. I'd put music on YouTube and Tay Zonday would be whatever that version of me was. And then I'd go along living life as, as Adam and, and have a career. I was going to be a university professor and do all that, uh, finish my doctorate. Then Chocolate Rain blew up and Tay Zonday got so big and people connected Tay Zonday to my real name. So you Google one, uh, you Google Tay Zonday, Adam comes up, Google Adam Bonner, Tay Zonday comes up. So then it was like this confusing thing where uh, do I try and keep them separate characters uh, or do I not? Sometimes I wish I had done a better job of keeping them separate characters. Like Miranda Sings is a character and um, you know, I forget what, what uh, um, her actual name is, but she created Miranda Sings as a character and then, uh, you know, that's the zany, crazy, can be anything. And then her actual singing uh, brand is different. And I feel like over the years, you know, like 2007, Tay Zonde was just wild, zany, didn't care, doing whatever. And over the years, it's almost kind of like Adam started to force his will on Tay Zonde. Adam, who wants to be more like Josh Groban, wants to be a serious opera singer, wants to be, uh, you know, respected technically. Uh, started to say, hey, I'm gonna, you know, sing stuff like Somewhere Over the Rainbow just to so sh say that I can do it. And I'm not sure that was best for the business of Tay Zonde, because I think Tay Zonde was big and wild and zany and have the deep voice and, and kind of arresting. And so that's kind of the, there's a little bit of confusion that I'm stuck with now in 2014 because I didn't stick with a clear brand of what Tay Zonde was. And so sometimes I feel like I need to be truer to that brand and just say, hey, okay, there's that business of being the deep voiced, crooning, over the top, little bit nerdy, whatever that is, stick with that, have that be Tay Zonde. And then, uh, I don't know, but it, it, it's, it's odd because I guess artists always evolve, artists always, you know, uh, Bob Dylan at the start of his career was not, you know, Bob Dylan 10 years later. So to what extent do I allow Tay Zonde to naturally evolve? Um, it, it, it's all confusing stuff. So I guess what is that? That's a long answer, but I don't know who Tay Zonde is. I'm finding out who Tay Zonde is. Um, I ended up using the name Tay Zonde for everything in entertainment. So I do business. I, I have a business meeting now. People call me Tay. They don't call me Adam. Uh, I, you know, my acting name in the Actors Union is Tay Zonde. If I want to go act and do something, it's the name people know me as in entertainment. So, in fact, you know, most of my friends in Hollywood who meet me in the entertainment context, they just call me Tay and know me as Tay, so it kind of just became my name. Uh, uh, hardly anybody calls me Adam except my family. So it's this weird identity thing where it's like it started as this alter ego. It started as this superhero version of me who could be anything and be separated from the consequence of what happened uh, with who I actually was, and then it just kind of slithered into becoming the entirety of who I am, and I'm not sure I like that. I'm not sure uh, that's exactly what I intended to happen, but um, hey, I made all the choices and that's what I live with today, so I'm figuring out what to do with it. Can you ever put on the glasses and become Clark Kent again? <laughs> uh, become Clark Kent or become Superman? Well, Clark Kent uh, would be, be the Adam. Would be Adam, I yeah, guess. Yeah, because uh, can would, I just be Adam? Well, what, what it seems like is that Tay Zonde has encompassed your entire being, and and because of that, you have a hard time separating what your career goals are from what your personal, yeah. uh, because the two identities are now one. 
So can't do you think you can ever truly separate them? I don't know. That's a good question. It's uh I think from a business standpoint, it's kind of like um I forget who said the where I got this quote, but someone said, you know, uh, Madonna doesn't work. Uh, uh, Madonna employs Madonna. Madonna is not Madonna herself. Meaning, like when you're an artist, you kind of choose your brand. You choose the direction it's going to be successful, and that's what you put out there. And um, you know, maybe. Akon loves singing opera in the shower. I don't know Akon. You know, maybe <laughs> uh, you know, maybe Eminem. You know, loves uh, singing like uh, you know uh, ballads when he's by himself. But his brand is very clear in the content that he's going to put out for that brand. And I just I feel like I haven't had that clarity of business vision. Part of it has been me just being confused and and discovering who I am because in 2007 I didn't know what I wanted to do in terms of a music direction and I feel like I have grown and explored and that's all YouTube was for me from the outset when I joined YouTube at the start of 2007 it was just a place to workshop experiment with the possibility of who I might become so I guess Tazon Day was just this palette this um you know thing to finger finger paint on or uh, put different videos up and and see what the result is and that process is still continuing to this day um i just sometimes uh, I wish that you know that there was a little bit of a tighter business and branding vision to it because it has kind of been all over the place and you know some people like the slow song some people like the fast song some people you know i don't know i guess artists always go through this i mean um uh, some artists kind of like, I mean, Coldplay, what was the, uh, the, the album with uh, Vita La Vida? I mean, Vita La Vida was the radio-friendly song, and then the rest of the, the songs in that album were just, you know, passion projects, projects that you're not going to hear on the radio that aren't going to have pop success. So it's like some artists deal with the need to be themselves, but the need to be marketable by kind of creating something as a marketable product, and then... Um, you know, the album is where all the other stuff is. And um, I've never really finished an album. I mean, I guess uh, Chocolate Ring 2.0, but I don't consider that an album. Um, and so uh, I feel like even seven years into this YouTube brand thing, I still haven't fully delivered and committed to being a musician as a professional musician um, who releases albums, songs, singles, original music. I don't even know where the original music is anymore. And 2007, I, I couldn't stop writing original songs in 2007. They just came. And uh, now it's like, you know, uh, you listen to my very first interviews in 2007. Please don't look them up there on YouTube. <laughs> but uh, I don't even, I, I, I'm very inarticulate. Uh, I sound like a nerd who doesn't know my brand or anything. And there's that innocence of not knowing how to be a professional public brand in 2007 and I think it made you endearing it made me endearing but more importantly Lamar I think music comes from not being able to speak music comes from what you can't say music comes from being inarticulate I feel like music is strongest when you're not as strong in other areas like my music was better when I wasn't as articulate <laughs> my music was better when I went on TV and did interviews and I was this stumbling not very confident nerd and it's almost kind of like becoming more seasoned at, at being Tazon Day the professional brand um, uh, it made me so hyper aware of everything of consequence of being very deliberate in what I said very measured very uh, particular that uh, that it's it's that's not where music comes from music comes from when you're speechless music comes from when you can't describe the world music comes from you know that moment where it's just like you have a really strong feeling but you can't get it out in an interview you can't speak it um, 
and that's what I always say, you know, people, what, what's the meaning of chocolate rain? And, and I always say, um, well, if I could say it, there's no reason to sing it, because I sing what can't be said. And ultimately, I think the better songs that I've written, most of which were 2007, 2008, Chocolate Rain, Internet Dream, etc. It's like, you're, I'm in that mode where uh, I'm singing what can't be said. I'm singing because I can't speak. And so now, you know, I do work, you know, I do voice work, I do, I write my own business emails, I do stuff that calls on me to become an articulate speaker, and I swear it's made my music worse. It's made my original music work, because it's like, music, it happens in isolation where you just, you don't have to speak, you don't have to form complete sentences, complete paragraphs, complete anything. That's where the best original songs come from, and being allowed to be in that space is why artists hire managers. They have teams, they, they outsource the management, a business manager, an agent, all these other people, um, not because they couldn't do it themselves, but because when you force yourself to wear every hat, you do, do your, run your own business, your own uh, correspondence, your own everything, um, then it takes away from your art and I guess I've just thought a lot about that because I mean, gosh, my, my, that's my GPS talking. Um, where are we going? Okay. Because, uh, you know, that's what I really thought. Yeah, you know, I haven't, my last real original song was Mommy Economy. That was like almost three years ago. And, um, I don't know. But it's, it felt like that song, because I remember it came out of maybe frustration about things that were literally happening in the economy. How, yeah. what, um, what, what keeps you from pulling from current events now? Um, there, there's still so much stuff happening now uh, that you can easily I, sing from. Well, I have a little bit on Tavox. I have done some vlogs, but um, I think Mommy Economy took a while to write, by the way. It took like two years to write. I need to remix it so it's a little bit more modern because I think I screwed up the mix on it. I, I see, um, but I don't want to stop too fast. So the car behind me hits me. Um, uh, uh, Lamar just saw me break quickly. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, original. I, I I don't know where the original stuff comes from. I just know that it happens when I'm not as articulate in in speaking. I've just made that connection. Like 2007, maybe I just took risks too. Because I've, I've posted a lot of terrible original songs on YouTube, a lot of which are delisted um, and not up anymore. So part of it is just saying, screw it, I'm going to take risks and put stuff up there and maybe it'll be terrible. Uh, but, you know, sometimes for that terrible stuff, uh, you, you have to go through that in order to get to the good stuff, get to the good version. All right, well, Jay's on day. Thank you so much for sharing. Wow, was that one take? Yeah. Oh, that's a one take vlog. You are, you are amazing. The meeting so. of Tays on day. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lamar. I, I learned a lot about you. That was just a spontaneous car vlog. I thought I'd try something different. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Lamar and I were actually driving to a show being put on by Nitro Circus, a group of action sports and stunt enthusiasts who put on these amazing shows with motorcycles and bicycles in the air and all these uh, amazing stunts. They actually have a YouTube channel uh, where you can check out some of their videos. There's some very interesting human stories. Uh, so definitely thank you to Nitro Circus, who's the reason Lamar and I had to uh, uh, go on that short road trip. And if you like these car vlogs, uh, definitely post in the comments what answers, uh, what, que what answers would you like me to answer? What questions would you like me to uh, answer, or what would you ask if you were sitting next to me in a car? Uh, ask me in the YouTube comments. Thank you so much for watching.